Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only Rome Flynn is on the line with us. Rome, what up, baby? Hey, Rome. What's happening? What's going on, y'all? And how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing blessed. I'm well. Good to talk yeah. to y'all. Good to talk you to you, too. Same what, what, what? Here, hey, man, I, I just want to, you know, I, I was telling everybody, you remind me of a young me, mostly your physique, dog. You know, <laughs> oh, gosh, way. <laughs> What do you mean, Evan? <laughs> let him live. How he remind? Let him I mean, live. You know, the dude put in work. You know, he puts in work. Uh, Ron, where are you quarantining at? Yeah, I'm in L.A. right now. Okay. Where did you grow up? Uh, Chicago. Okay. He's wow. from the yeah. Shy. All right. Uh, what What has that quarantine life been like for you? I've been, I've been, I'll be watching you online. I see you shoot video clips and the whole nine. Is that yeah. your your way of, like, adjusting to the times? What kind of work you been able to drum out of the quarantine? Yeah, you know, I've just been kind of focusing on the stuff that I haven't been able to have time to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of piano, playing a lot of guitar, just uh, just really being submerging myself in, um, in the music. Because right now it's the only thing I can really do because production stuff is, is at, a, at a halt right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, hey, Rome, this is Heather. Nice to meet you over the phone and, and talk with you. I'm always interested when people say they grew up in Chicago um, mm-hmm. as to what kind of music that you guys listen to, because you a lot of times artists from Chicago love East Coast like rappers yeah. and hip hop. But then you're kind of in the middle. So you're not surprised if you mm-hmm. know a lot of West Coast music and then Chicago has its own vibe club. and everything. So what did you yeah. listen to? You know, actually, in my, uh, growing up, um, my dad actually played a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> and, yeah, man. <laughs> so at a young age, I, I was really exposed to that music. Uh, but as I grew up, you know, I listened to people like Bump J. Um, okay. So, so you know, imagine. like Bump Thorns and Harmony, mm-hmm. um, Twister. Um, you know, those are the people I grew up listening to and idolizing. You you Twister. brought up your... Oh. your- yeah, Twister's dope. Bump J, man. Um, mm-hmm. your, your father. Yeah. You, now you you of uh, Cuban descent as well, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. It's, Cuban. It's, actually, my dad is Cuban and Irish, and uh, my mom is is black. Did did wow. they bring any of the? Did your dad bring any of those Cuban rhythms? Or was he? Did he identify with the culture much uh, in the household? Mm-hmm. You know, I actually grew up in the household with my mom. You know, um, single mother, okay. so. Uh, you know, my dad was around, but you know, he was he was in the streets and, and really wasn't really there to influence me in a way. Um, my grandmother died when I was at a younger age, and I actually never knew my grandpa on my dad's side, so um, I didn't really get to grow up around the uh, the culture. But mm-hmm. because I, I grew up in Chicago, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm still well educated and versed on it because uh, it's still a part of my DNA. So you mm-hmm. came up in a single mother household. Wow! So this makes your story yeah. even even more incredible because yeah, I know yeah man <laughs> <laughs> shit and then you went to uh Benedictine um uh, uh university on a basketball scholarship yeah. correct yeah yeah actually got yeah, um so I kind of played my way into a scholarship I didn't have one when I graduated high school uh but uh you know I had one uh and then I walked away from it to pursue acting and to move to LA <laughs> So what, when all this was happening, what, were y'all broke at the same time or your mom held a, a, a steady job? Like growing up in Chicago, I would imagine that your age could be challenging, but I don't. what were the conditions of your environment? Yeah, you know, um, we, we definitely, we, we didn't have a lot. You know, I grew up in a household of, of about seven other, you know, my siblings. So, wow. Um, wow. We, yeah, it was about, we had a four bedroom. You know, my mom, she just, she just always made it made a way. So it's just kind of the reason why I feel so driven and uh, uh, just focused on, on trying to break down barriers. And, you know, it'd be great because there's been a lot of opportunities in my career where I could have, you know, taken a back seat or become complacent in different ways. So it just always challenged me to be to be more. So I learned I learned that from her and, and partially why pursuing music and pursuing everything else that I'm doing. Mm. Oh, I like this. You see why I say he reminds me of a younger me, Heather? You know what? Like, <laughs> you still finding a way to put yourself in this conversation is a mess. Anyway. <laughs> Rome. <laughs> Even is... Rome laughing. Yeah. Rome, yeah, this is Tracy. Mad. I'm wondering, um, since your mother is such a big influence on you, I mm. noticed how 
fire you are with the fashion. And for a lot of yeah. dudes, it takes a while for them to like create their own personal style that's still like swaggy but mature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did it take mm -hmm. a while for you to be able to dress in this way? Yeah, you know, it, it's really just about standing out. Like I, I was always, always felt like I was just standing out when I was younger. So growing up, I do the same thing now. Like I always try to go against the grain um, because I feel like that's a part of my my DNA to to branch out and 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 to be different, you know, and to and to show that uh, you know masculinity can be defined in a lot of different ways. And I think fashion is one of those things that um, that is just synonymous. You know, you you can. In, in whatever field professionally you, you live in, you know, f fashion is, is universal. So um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to, to, you know, I went to Paris and, and I was out there for the Balmain show and I'm real interested in high fashion and then just kind of branching out and being and trying to brand my own self in my own fashion, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you be okay with wearing a skirt? I know a lot of people have had very... Um, highly potent opinions about black men yeah. and fashion choices and thinking that some of the mm. styles of today are emasculating a black man. Are you open-minded to like going into clothing that for the most part society has deemed feminine? Yeah. You know, I think, um, I think it really just depends on your individuality. You know, I, I, I never judge things based on my own perspective because that would be a very closed-minded version of myself. So when I see guys doing these things where they're expressing themselves, um, I just applaud them because as a black man or as, as a man, man uh, growing up in America or wherever you live as a black man, like it's already 10 times harder to be yourself and, and to branch out and be individual. So, you know, I applaud people who, who are able to step into that space and, and, and say, yeah, you know, this is me, this is how I'm feeling. Uh, but for me, you know, personally, I, I I don't see a version of that where it would work for me. But like I said, I you you never know, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm yeah. always open to trying to uh, push the envelope on 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 myself personally, and and also just expand my horizon about things. Uh, man, we got Ron oh. Flynn here. I'm loving it. Um, if you watch um, 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 How to Get Away with Murder with the magnificent viola davis uh you could catch him yeah. as G gabriel maddox um i wanted to ask you this too because i'm a father and i became a father at a at a real you know at a crazy time in my career and yeah. um, year, years ago when you know i was i was independent i had radio going i had you know distribution going i had productions going merchandise i had all these different things going and then uh, my daughter uh, came into my life, and initially I thought that, damn, how, because it wasn't necessarily a part of the plan, but uh, it became the plan. And I, I was trying to mm. figure out how, how I'm going to juggle all these things and still be able to be a great father, but um, also be great at what I do. You had you yeah. had a daughter uh, six years ago, but in that time yeah. period, you've had a lot that's happened for you from how to get away with murder um to the bold and the beautiful and all these different major roles that you've had N yeah. initially were you nervous about going into fatherhood and then how did you develop your rhythm how did you develop your program yeah you know um i when you know when my daughter came her name's kamiko mm -hmm. uh i didn't have i didn't do any projects I, I wasn't on i had never stepped foot on a set like i never you know i, I wasn't further along in my career at that point. So I was actually at a crossroads where um, I basically needed to decide whether or not I was going to continue on with this career path or choose something that was a lot more uh, conventional. Um, mm -hmm. And I just listened to my intuition and I feel like, I feel like God told me to, you know, to trust myself and to trust him. You know, we always have that little voice in our head that tells us those things. Uh, but sometimes the other voice is louder and tells us to go the other way. Uh, but I, but I heard this smaller voice and, and I and I trusted it and I knew that mm. that potentially it could be something amazing not just for my daughter but for my whole family. You know, so um, I had a lot that was driving me to continue to try to navigate this thing. But I mean, initially it was it was difficult and there's been a lot of sacrifices. And there always will be. But 
you know, when it's all said and done, I want her to be able to to look up and be proud of me, man, and and to know that I didn't give up, and and to know that I created a lane and really and made a career and life out of out of nothing, you know. Yeah. And this is a testament of what um, the American story is to me, you know. Not rags uh, to riches per se, because I'm still trying to get the riches, you know. But <laughs> but at the same yeah. time, it's like you know, just persevering and being persistent and not saying no, you know. And that's kind of values I want to instill in her when she gets older. Yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll she'll be proud, man. I'm loving this guy, uh, especially when you let her hold that daytime Emmy Award for outstanding young younger <laughs> actor in a drama series. Give him a round of applause yeah, for man. that, for the bold and the beautiful. Um, man, so my daughter name is Kiyomi. My daughter's name is Kiyomi. Okay. See, I, I see see how you see the similarities now, Rome. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Rome, don't fall come for on, it. Rome, don't Rome, come it. on, man. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. Hear me out, hear me out, dog. Hear me out. Um, yeah. what, what's been can, can, what's been the most? I'm, I'm just sure being around uh, Viola Davis is just heavenly yeah. and divine to work around her. What's the probably one of the if you could share one of the most standout moments you've had witnessing her acting alongside of her uh, that you walked away with uh, being a part of this cast? Yeah, you know. Um... I get this question a lot, and sometimes it's it's so hard to pinpoint one thing. Okay. Because, you know, Viola Davis is somebody that, you know, I look up to, and I've been looking up to before I got the opportunity to work with her. And Mm -hmm. so when I initially met her, uh, I was so nervous, man, you know, because she to me is like the epitome of professionalism and class and, you know, representation on screen. And I was so nervous. I was calling her Miss Davis for like a whole month. And she was like, call me V. Like, you know, what are you doing? Call me V. So she, she really made me feel comfortable, even working alongside somebody as, as amazing as she is. But the one thing that I did learn from her was not necessarily anything that she ever told me, like uh, verbally or anything. It was really just watching her, you know, uh, digest things and, and to know that it's okay not to be perfect. Like, I, I thought I needed to be perfect at all times, you know, especially working on, you know, ABC, a mainstream network, and the amount of pressure that comes along with that. She just taught me that, that, that life is messy, you know, and things won't be perfect all the time. And this is the beauty of what we do is we get to we get to make those mistakes on TV, you know, and sometimes those things translate in a way that people identify with. Um, mm-hmm. And she just kind of helped me uh, zone in and, and, and focus on, what was important, which is, you know, representation of, of, uh, of being on a major network. And, and, you know, she, she just spoke so, so elegantly about, about how she, how she came up and where she came from. And she, she's just so opinionated, but also just so educated, man. And just so knowledgeable about so many different things that it really just challenged me to want to know more about everything, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely a special person and very, specific energy you know to work around and and you know i feel very lucky and humble to be able to even share the space with her what about mm. the 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 you know when you think of shonda rhimes you know gray's anatomy private practice scandal yeah. you know uh shout out to yeah. carrie as well we've had the whole cast of scandal on our show they're all citizens and b has been on the show too by the way um <laughs> That the way she writes and her writing team, what mm. they put together is unique in itself. And I would imagine it, it's almost like it's levels to this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you just can't be yeah. a, a makeshift act. You got to be serious about your craft to be able, in oh, my yeah. opinion, yeah. to be in that world and do it well. Um, yeah. What was your process on even? Because everything is timing, pacing, and mm-hmm. it's a lot of words. Yeah. Like you know how how you got to be what, smart to even watch it. <laughs> yeah. Word, you gotta yeah. follow up. You gotta keep up. You gotta keep up, man. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, there is definitely a, a, a an underlining understanding for me going into it, knowing that there was a certain pressure that I needed to um, keep up with everybody that I was working with. You know, because shows like this also educate you in a way that don't feel so poignant. You don't really know you're being educated. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't force things down your throat. You know, it, it just kind of reveals things to you in a way. Um, and, and you know, Shonda Rhimes shows can be informational. Um, obviously, Grey's Anatomy, you know, 
uh, scandal, um, you know, how to get away. Uh, these mm-hmm. shows have been very, I feel, instrumental um, in, in educating the public on on a plethora of things. So uh, going into it, you know, I play a young, you know, uh, lawyer or trying to become a lawyer. And, and initially for me, I, I was so wrapped around my head about what did that look like to me? You know, to be frank, I never really met a lawyer that was, or, or someone that wanted to become a lawyer that was black, you know, mm-hmm. uh, growing up. All my, you know, the lawyers that I knew were all white. So I thought in my mind about how I felt like that would sound. And, and then I realized how much, imp- how important it was for me to try to be a true representation of that uh, for me on screen to influence young brothers and sisters that trying to, you know, break the mold and do something different and, and step out and go try to become a lawyer or, you know, do things out of their comfort zone. So, um, it, it was a lot of responsibility doing this character, but you know, it was, it's been the most fulfilling thing that I've ever been a part of, um, uh-huh. to, to be able to do this show. Well, wow. and now, uh, man, Ron Flynn, Ron Flynn is here uh, on the on the radio with us right now. If you want to talk with him, eight 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 seven four two three three four five. And I just wanted to give some backstory to who you are because you've had an amazing journey, and and I love this transition that's taking place. Mm-hmm. Uh, this brand new, no pun intended. Uh, transition that's taking place for you <laughs> in the music scene, and I know you got an EP you're gonna uh, release later this year. Um, yeah. How do you, you know, how different are you um, as an actor uh, than you are as a singer, or is it all one and the same to you? So, and, and how you decide what kind of songs you're gonna sing? Yeah, um, I think in my true essence, I'm a storyteller. Um, wow. and I've been telling stories since I was a kid, you know, and, in a lot of different ways to my family members. And I've been doing music actually before I started acting, um, but, but acting mm-hmm. kind of took off first. It kind of created a life of its own. And, you know, I just felt like I'm in the space right now and in the, in the right time right now to, to focus more on music and to give myself more voice, uh, as an artist. Uh, but for me, you know, the writing process is, is very different, you know, as opposed mm-hmm. to writing things particular to a show. Um, but music is so universal. You know, it speaks to anybody that listens to it. Uh, some people get different interpretations of what they're hearing, but, you know, it's something special about that. So uh, it's something freeing and very vulnerable about about speaking something that, that made you feel anything, especially on a record. Mm-hmm. Um so I always just try to tap into whatever truth that is about what I'm feeling. You know, it's time and yeah, yeah. Um, mm. I didn't mean to cut you off, man. Because when no, you, you good, when bro. You, uh, okay, because um, when you say how people interpret your music, first of all, mm-hmm. he's a writer, Heather B. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. uh, talk about this song, "Keep Me in Mind," and Yay Ali is on it, who done work with Chris Brown and Joyner yeah. Lucas, Business Boy, Party Next, um, yeah. Next Door, all these great people, uh, Fortune and uh, Keanu's. Um, all these the great people that you work with. This first song, man, it, it concerns me. You know, Rome, I'm going I'm to be honest with you, man. It, it concerns me, man. Okay, because I'm seeing myself as, I'm seeing you as a predator. <laughs> the, song, <laughs> the song is called Keep Me In Mind, Heather and, yeah, and Tracy. And, it, yeah, and it's like, it's, it's to, the way I interpret it when I listen to the song, I had to listen to it back and forth, is are you saying when this dude, is slacking and ain't treating you right. Hey, yeah. keep me in mind. Is that what you say? <laughs> <laughs> when, sway, like when Sway ain't there, keep me in mind. That's what it sounds <laughs> no, like you no, saying. No, that. Boom. That's not, that's not no. what it means. Oh, okay. All right. My bad. Go, what, what, what does that mean? You know, like I say, I like the leading music up for people to interpret, but I feel like when I wrote that record, it was about a specific situation. Um, okay. it's really just about how, you know, your blessing really is on the other side of the door, you know, uh, and, and don't, don't be captive of your circumstance. You know, a lot of people get familiar with the people that they with and feel like they need to be with them because of the familiarity. Cause mm-hmm. sometimes we confuse familiarity with love and, and, and sometimes, uh, that person or that, that thing is so close to you, you, you don't even see it. So I just say, keep me in mind, you know? And you don't have to go through the sh- I mean, the stuff you're going through, right? 
yeah, uh, yeah. that that I'm right around the other side of the coin. I'm not asking you to go cheat on your man. Okay, don't do that. All right, okay, don't, yeah, okay. you know what I'm cool. saying? Like, but just know that there's, there's better. You don't have to 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 stay victim to to your circumstance, and you deserve to be treated how you see yourself, and and to be loved how you see yourself. Yeah, because those washboard abs, man, I, I can't win <laughs> against that, bro. Come on, man. Oh, that part don't remind you of, of you? His, when I was dad? younger. That's why. Uh, <laughs> see, 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 I just, I, you know, that's checking I'm in. just checking in, bro, you just, know, I'm, this way. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, look, we got somebody on the line for you, man. Uh, y'all want to talk okay. with him. He, he's right here. Uh, uh, Ron Flynn is here. We got Tommy in Illinois. Tommy, what up? What up? What up, hey, Tommy? What's up, Sway? What's up? Say what up to Ron. What's up, bro? Hey, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Just chilling, man, relaxing. I was, I just had a question. I know you're from the Illinois area. And you say you're yeah. from Chicago. I had a my one of my little cousins went to Lancaster and Springfield. Uh, mm-hmm. I was wondering when did you move down to the Springfield area? Yeah, so I, I moved down to Springfield. My mom uh, and my family. Um, I went to well right before I went to high school around that time. Uh, and yeah, man, you know, I, I still go frequently back to Springfield sometimes, man. And yeah, I went to the same high school as Andre Godala, actually. So um, oh. it's kind of cool to, to be able to, you know, I've seen him out here and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely Springfield is in, instrumental in my in my life and my career also. Do, were That's you in so Drake? Man. Were, uh, thank you. Hey, Tommy, you're a citizen, brother. Thank Appreciate you. you. Hey, man, by the way, get his, new, get his new music. He, he has great music. Uh, Wave is a song he has. The Wave, he has Keep Me In Mind. Brand new. It's a bunch of songs that I've listened to that I think is worth you listening to, okay? Definitely, definitely. Good looking My, out. No problem, man. Ed and, Ed and Callie, what you think? Say what up to Ron. You. Ed, you there? Where, bro? Ed, you there? Okay, Ed ain't there. Um, hey, do you and Dre stay in touch? Or did y'all know each other, you and Andre? No, we didn't know each other growing uh, growing up. But um, uh-huh. I've ran into him. I went to a, a, a game out here and I saw him. But uh, no, nah, he's he's always on the move. You know, he's got, he's got a book out. He's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I like man. to connect with him though. I feel like he's dope. Very intelligent. Very um, mm-hmm. very lucid man. Man, he got layers to him. We got a chance to talk to him years ago um, on mm-hmm. our show, and I haven't been able to catch up with him since. Hey, Rome, when this is all done and said, man, I would love for you to come up to the studio uh, when we're back into wherever it's going to be like. Uh, yeah. But I would love for you to come up, man. Proud of you, bro. I would you got love that. Great... Yeah, man. I would love that. Uh, absolutely. You got a great story. Uh, people, please listen to his music. I'm going to play the new single, Keep Me In Mind. And then, Rome, uh, I, I watch you on your Instagram, man. If you want to, mm-hmm. like, if you need somebody to EP a workout video for you or something, <laughs> I'm here, dog. Whoa. I'm here for you. I got you get your I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot you in text, man. I'm going to see, see what you work with. I got you. Okay. Oh, no, man. You don't want to see what I'm working with, man. <laughs> 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 shit, shit, shit. So you got washboard apps. I got wash machine apps. It's a little too, too different. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Rome Flynn, man. Give him a round of applause. I'm going to play this single. Uh, thanks for calling in, brother, and have a beautiful day. You too. Y'all stay blessed. Be safe. Okay, yeah. man. All right. This is Keep Me In Mind. It's Sway in the Morning on Shade 4-5. <laughs> 